returns on the back end. So does that prevent the advisor from doing it, or could they just possibly get in trouble later? And is that yet to be determined? Well, under the, the new rule, you can do it, but it's rather difficult, and you have to fully disclose absolutely everything to the client. I'm not actually sure that you could get away with selling a variable annuity and, and taking that 10% off the top at all, to be honest. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, any uh, uh, advice that you give that you benefit from is a prohibited transaction. They cast a, a very wide net there, and that's catching almost every financial advisor. And then, then they give you a number of exemptions to, to work within. So the, the flip side to the new fiduciary rule that makes almost everybody a fiduciary is going to be the best interest contract exemption, which gives you the rules that you have to work within in order to get your prohibited transaction legal again. And most of those are, are going to be uh, things like um, you have to actually be a fiduciary. You have to tell your client that you're going to be a fiduciary. You have to then act in their best interest. You have to disclose. Um, you have to disclose almost everything that that you do. You have to let them know who's paying you, other than the client. Um, you can't take fees if the total fees are are going to be excessive. Uh, you have to let them know about your conflicts of interest. And all of this, if you put it down on paper and slide it in front of the client and the client reads it, if they're smart, they'll leave. And if they see something that's that's not appropriate. Wow, that, that that's going to change the game. And, and I would imagine that more than a few advisors and or companies aren't happy with this. I suspect it's going to hurt the cruise industry awful because all those advisors have been getting free cruises because of, of grandma's money for a very long time. So, so the advisor now may have to, or, or probably will have to, disclose to you how they're getting paid and what they're getting paid and if they qualify for a vacation by selling you something, right? That's what we're talking about? Right. They have to put that up front. It cannot be in the fine print on page four. Uh, if they are dishonest and, and try to hide it from you in fine print, then they're not complying with this exemption and their behavior is is now a, a prohibited transaction again. Wow. And, and it's funny because I've been conflicted about this because I love the rule from a general uh, standpoint because it's going to help millions and millions of people. But the very small little petty part of me uh, is kind of sad because that takes away at least part of my competitive advantage is that m most big brokerage firms – where you think you have an advisor that works for you is honestly a salesperson now would have to tell you that you are paying them. The mutual fund company is paying them. Uh, their company is paying them. And if they sell 10 of these, they get a vacation. That's going to make it really hard to sell crappy product. Yeah. And what's going to happen is that cash cow is going to dry up. They're not going to be able to get enough people to sign up the dotted line to get their free cruise anymore. And I feel really bad for them. Now, does this, this apply to all accounts? It does not apply to all accounts. It only applies to investment accounts. So if you have a taxed account, then they can sell you essentially anything that they want. And the, the rule does not necessarily apply. All right. I, I'm going to restate what I think you said, because I want to make sure that I'm clear and the listeners got it a hundred percent. If I show up with $100,000 in a taxable account and hire an advisor who rep represents themselves as a fiduciary when it comes to IRAs and ERISA accounts, they can still fuck me with the taxable account. Is that what you just said? Right. Okay. That's so, exactly what I said. So I, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. And I've talked about it on the show before. If, if you were to show up and hire an attorney and the attorney represented you most of the time, but not all of the time, that, that would not be acceptable. If, if your doctor generally was looking out for your best interest in health, except for a few things that weren't necessarily clear to you, because I'm assuming if it's in a taxable account, they don't have to tell you 
that you since you assumed that they are a fiduciary with your IRA that they're not a fiduciary, you'd have to ask. Uh, you would have to ask, and and then you should probably ask them why they're they're not representing you as a fiduciary on all their accounts. That's correct. Uh, so if if someone shows up and has ten thousand dollars to invest, and and maybe I would say to them, hey, given the circumstances of your investments, it might be best for you to put five thousand in your Roth IRA and five thousand in your spouse's Roth IRA, and never pay tax on that money again. This person could then, instead of giving you that advice. Because as soon as it goes into the IRA or the Roth IRA, they have to act as a fiduciary. Fiduciary, that word is so hard for me. Instead, they could say, you should take that $10,000 and buy a variable annuity, and they're still okay. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. So, so in, and maybe I'm, I'm beating this point because I think it's critical. If someone is not always putting your best interest first, how can we consider them putting your best interest at all. I mean, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Am I missing something or does that sound right? Yeah, that's exactly how it is. It's not allowed in the legal community. We have rules of professional responsibility and I can't just represent you on, on in one matter and then turn around and sue you in the other because that's just not fair. And so with this rule coming into effect, we're, we're doing this recording in, in July of 2016 uh, so when the listeners listen to this, be aware that if your advisor suddenly comes to you and wants to start changing things or wants to lock up your money in some kind of new fang-dangled investment that maybe they wouldn't be able to do in April, you have to be extra, extra cautious in the next few months. Does that sound like a reasonable guidance? Well, I mean, they should be be using it in the first place, but uh, fair, fair yeah, enough. Fair enough. Absolutely. But, uh, I'm I'm just waiting to see how the industry finds new loopholes because one of the things I thought I read is that they can't sell you a variable annuity, but a fixed annuity might be okay. Do you have any thoughts on that? I, I do believe that there's some guidance from the Department of Labor where they do say that a, a fixed annuity is going to be okay and very specific circumstances. That, that's correct. Because, it, and this is one of those weird things, a fixed annuity is not an investment product or not an investment thing, and therefore it, it's an insurance thing. So the person who was advising you, if you roll over your old 401k for $400,000 and they put it into an IRA and they could still recommend that you buy a fixed annuity because it wouldn't be an investment product. Therefore, they're still not covered by the law. Oh, I'm not quite sure on that. That's that's not that's a little deeper into to your realm than mine. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the things that I had read as far as something uh, consumers should be concerned about. Because as long as the money is invested inside of an IRA that you move to this new advisor, they have to follow fiduciary rules. But if they give you advice about insurance, life insurance, or a variable, a fixed annuity that's not an investment, then it's not investment advice. It's life insurance advice, and therefore the rules may not apply. They have a different lobbyist, sure. Wow. And, and so the industry spent some effort trying to block this. Is that correct? Uh, they were up in arms. They had their pitchforks out, and they were knocking on every congressman's door to try to stop this thing. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we're getting into our, our 30 minute time frame here for the total interview, which is fantastic. I, I just don't want to crush the listener with too much information, but any, any parting thoughts, something that they should know about this that we've not covered yet. This is a, a good law. Uh, if they hear otherwise, then someone is twisting data and manipulating facts. Um, the end result will be that the uh, advisors will likely turn away clients that have very little money, but the the rest of the the majority of Americans will not be affected. Excellent. Well, WB, thank you so much for being on the Phil Ferguson show, and I uh, greatly appreciate what you're doing and, and how you've come here to try to help the listeners out a little bit. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. A special thanks to WB for being on the show. 
and sharing his experience and expertise as a actual attorney and an attorney specializing in financial law, talking about the new Department of Labor rules and how that might affect you. So uh, keep your eyes open. Uh, your advisor may contact you and tell you that they have to make some changes. And the big question, you know, I would ask if I was you is, you know, why weren't you acting in my best interest before? And definitely be concerned if they just change you from A shares to C shares or B shares or some other class, but the same investments. If the investments weren't good before, why do you want to pay a higher expense ratio for them now. So uh, just stuff to keep an eye on. Uh, be careful. And, you know, with everything, if you don't understand fully what you're investing in, don't invest in it. And, uh, you know, if you have questions, of course, you can contact me, Phil, at PolarisFinancialPlanning.com. Otherwise, I hope to see you out there at some conference in the near future. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao.